Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you the process of designing and faceting of the famous Flower of Life pattern. The Flower of Life is an ancient geometric symbol that has been found in various cultures throughout history. It consists of multiple, evenly spaced, overlapping circles arranged in a hexagonal pattern, forming a symmetrical and harmonious design. This symbol has been widely recognized for its intricate beauty and deep historical significance. I have seen some beautiful gemstones with the flower of life pattern and have always been fascinated by them. Master gem cutters like Mark Oros, Viktor Tuzlukov and Andrew Brown used it in their magnificent creations. Among Andrew Brown's faceting diagrams, you can find a free version of this design. So, when I had a request from a customer to make a gemstone with this design, I accepted the challenge. I decided to make my own fasting diagram for it using fractional indexes so that the fasting could follow the original pattern more accurately. The faceting of this design is usually done in two parts. First, a pattern of rhombuses is prepared to serve as the basis for the final diagram. These rhombuses are left with a matte surface, unpolished. Then, in the second part, small polished facets are added on the edges of the rhombuses to create the final flower of life design. It is crucial to prepare a correct pattern in the first part, so that all the rhombuses are the same size when viewed from above. If this is not done, the imaginary circles of this pattern will not be the same size, and the entire design will lose its symmetry and appeal. To prepare the diagram for the first part, I started with the flower of life drawing and traced lines through the centers of the circles. Then I erased the unneeded lines to achieve the rhombus pattern for this design. With this drawing ready, I went to the Gem Cut Studio program to create the corresponding cut diagram. If you don't know how to use an image to design cuts, I have another video on my channel that explains it step by step. Unfortunately, the Gem Cut Studio does not allow you to work with fractional indexes, so for a better fit of the facets to the drawing, I had to use the GemCAD program as well. And finally, we have our diagram for the first part finished. In the second part, we are going to add polished facets that make the final flower of life design. To do this, I use the same initial image to arrange these small facets. Again, I use both GemCut Studio for the initial design and GemCAD to place more precise facets with fractional indexes. This way, I have completed the faceting design for the second part, which corresponds to the final flower of life pattern for my gem. Finally, the computer work is done and we can get to cutting on the faceting machine. I have a nice piece of amethyst from Brazil, very clean and with a beautiful color, and I'm going to use it to cut a large flower of life stone about 25 millimeters in diameter. But first, I'm using my Cap King machine to quickly preform the rough amethyst into the approximate shape of the future stone. This machine has a much more powerful motor than faceting machines, and I can remove large pieces of stone really quickly, remove fissures and inclusions, and take advantage of areas with better color. Here we can see the stone already glued to the top and rounded on a 360 grit disc, ready for pavilion faceting. I cut and polish the facets of the pavilion using cerium oxide on the creamway lap. You can see that I use a simple cone-shaped pavilion. I don't want to use any more complex faceting here. I just need a light reflector to highlight the pattern of the crown facets. Now the pavilion is ready. 
we can make the transfer and start working with the crown. The really delicate work begins now. Here, the stone is already attached to the dop on the pavilion side. We begin to work on the crown. First of all, I am going to shape it a little by hand to give it the approximate dome shape more quickly. To do this more accurately, I use my automatic rounding method, as explained in another video on my channel. These additional steps in preforming the crown allow me to remove a lot of material quickly and accurately, bring the stone closer to its final shape and save time on faceting. The crown is now quite close to its final height and shape so I'm going to start cutting the first facets. My cutting procedure in this case is the following. First, I cut the six facets that meet at the apex of the crown, using my machine to achieve the centering. Then I add two more tiers of six facets each, with the size that corresponds to the length of what I call the guide rhombuses. In the rhombus pattern diagram, we can see these three rhombuses that will determine the size of the circles that will appear in the second phase, and of course the other rhombuses on these three guide tiers. Their size is what we have to calculate for our stone size, also taking into account that we want these three rhombuses to have the same length when we look at the stone from above. This means that if we measure their actual length, those that are further from the center and are more inclined with respect to the central axis must have a slightly greater length. We can even calculate the exact length they should have using an Excel worksheet since we know their angles of inclination. This way, when cutting these first three tiers, we can measure them exactly with a micrometric loop to establish the basis of the future design with precision. Also, some space will be left in the outer circle of the stone, near its girdle, to create a frame for the flower of life pattern. Once the first three tiers are established, we begin to add the other facets of the diagram to create a pattern of equal rhombuses. We start from the center of the stone and advance toward the border. The midpoints between the facets will guide us through each step of this process. Finally, the first phase of faceting is complete. We check the result and, if necessary, make some corrections before moving on to polishing the facets of the final diagram. Before moving on, I also polish the facets of the outer circle, so that we can then see how our final design is taking shape within this frame. And finally, the first phase is complete. Everything is ready to move on to the final faceting diagram. These facets are so tiny that I print the crown diagram in large format to not get confused with the facet numbers. We have to pay extreme attention when polishing these small facets, almost all of which have fractional indexes. I start the process from the center of the stone and make these small facets directly on the polishing lap. Again, I use the creamway lap with cerium oxide. If we make a mistake at this stage, we have to go back to the previous diagram to fix it and we will lose a lot of time. This is the most exciting and rewarding moment in the entire process of making this cut.
we see how the pattern is generated from the center of the stone and expands outward, like life itself flowing from its point of origin. You can enjoy some footage of this process. Finally, the faceting is complete. This is what our gem looks like after making the last tier of facets, still mounted on the machine. I take it out of the machine and observe it. To see its true brilliance, we have to remove it from the dope, because the glue prevents the pavilion from reflecting light properly. I will show you the finished stone at the end of the video. But first, we have to do some more faceting work. It turns out that my customer also commissioned me to make three smaller stones with the same pattern, each measuring 16 millimeters. I'm going to make those two, and then I'll show you the whole set. The procedure for cutting these smaller stones is the same, except that in the first step, I only set two main tiers, not three, since the pattern will be smaller. Then we create a rhombus pattern and finally polish the small facets on the edges of the rhombuses to create the final flower of life pattern. This way, we have finished one of the small stones with the same design. You can see that in this case, we have the central circle and only one additional ring of crossed circles. If we were to cut the complete diagram on a stone of this size, the design would be too small to see clearly. Here we have another stone ready, but still attached to the dop. Notice how, because it is still glued, it does not shine as brightly as the other stone of the same cut that has already been removed. This is what happens when we fast stones. We never see the final result until we have removed the stone and cleaned off the glue. Now, the work is finished. Here are all four gems from this set together. I hope you like them as much as my customer and I do. Another new representation of this ancient symbol, full of meaning, cut in natural amethyst from Brazil, ready to be used in a spectacular and unique set of designer jewelry. I hope you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and visit my website to see my other faceted gemstones. See you in the next video.